be afraid of God, but to reverence Him. That's right. That was the reverence of all. That is what we're supposed to do with God. He is the only one who can destroy the soul and the body. Matthew 10 and 28 states, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus. That's right. Proverbs 9 and 10 tells us, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the, of the holy is understanding. So when you start fearing things, start thinking about who you are in the God. You got it. I, the last time I spoke with you guys, I said you are chosen. Right, right. Amen. You are still chosen, even though you have that fear. Think about that. Think on these things. Yeah. Yeah. Philippians yeah. 8 and 4. Yes. Or 4 and 8. Think on these things. When you, when you start getting to a situation where you're not sure what to do, that verse works for me. Yeah. Because it will take my mind off of what that is. And put things into perspective. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 15 and 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 13. For I, the Lord God, will hold thy right hand. Saying unto thee, fear not. I will help thee. Yeah. You have no need to be afraid of anything. Because you were created to have dominion over all things on the earth and in the seas. True. Now, if you have dominion, that means you have power. You have authority. Mm -hmm. You can take charge mm -hmm. over whatever it is. Right. You can take charge over that fear. Mm -hmm. You can take charge over your life. Mm -hmm. We speak words of life. Yes. We speak words of death because we have the power of death, death, life and death in the tongue. Mm -hmm. So we should be aware of what we're saying. Not only to others, but to ourselves. Yes, 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 what are you speaking yes, to yourself? Yes, yes, are you speaking life? Yes. Oh, my back is killing me. Is it really? Or is it just hurting? Right. We really have to learn that right. we say out of our mouths has power. Yeah. Even those that are unsafe to speak things and it comes to pass because they believe it. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. It's not something that you just have to be a Christian to do. But Christians have a harder time with it because they're not believing it. Mm. Help us. Help us. Yes. Mm. Psalms 8, 6 to 8. Thou mayest have the meaning of the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. Did that leave anything out? <laughs> we don't have control over the weather we don't have control over the sun, the moon, and the stars but we have control over the things that are on this earth yes. and we need to stand up and take that control Thank you. we have to start seeing, us, seeing ourselves the way God sees us yeah, yeah, like we have to start seeing others the way God sees them because yes, yes. we look at others and we got some things we might want to say but is that what God says about them? Yeah, you can look at a person, but you can't judge them by a cover. Because yeah, right. you don't know what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's God's child and who's not. Mm -hmm. The word says, touch not my anointing to my prophet, no harm. But yet the Gavin. Oh, Jesus. Do you really know that person that well that you can do that? First. Even if you did, you shouldn't. First. Come on, man. It's good teaching. And that's exactly watching it. I mean, you really, I mean, this is something that's just been it's been in me for a minute, and and whew, I've learned so much from it and dealing with it for myself. Because I'm gonna tell you where I where I started from. I'm gonna give you my testimony here. I had a house. I had the car. I had the kids. Didn't have the husband. That was okay. Because I had a job that was making the money. I was able to take care of all I needed to take care of. I looked outside my door and I would see people walking around. they smoking that stuff, drinking. Look at them. They can't do nothing better than that. This is, this is, this is who I was. I looked down at them. Because I felt like I, they can do better than that. Don't nobody just want to do that. That wasn't. And I told my 
control in that stuff. Tell you how God does you. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Put you. He took me out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and put me over here in the war zone. Right. Yeah. I was on drugs for six years of my life and I started at 40. Mm -hmm. I had okay? I lived in a house where we sold drugs, we smoked drugs, all kinds of stuff happened. I thank God for this stuff. Because I, and I believe it's just because of the age I was, where I'd been, and what I already knew. And I didn't have fear of, of somebody coming at me for anything. That I was able to sit there and watch the stuff that went on. People become paranoid. I learned that these people aren't out there because they choose to be half of them. Some of them started when they were down here. They lived in speakeasies, and their moms or whatever left the glasses out. They get a little taste of the glass, and they want to get that feeling again. So they go and they try. And they kept going on and on until they got to where they were. And it was the point where they didn't know anything else. That was a way of life for them. They didn't know about anything else. The Lord let me see this stuff. And I understand that I was able to get out only through his mercy and grace. I was brought up in the church, and I thank God for that, too. When I did get out, it wasn't because I wanted to. I wanted to, but I didn't. I said, Lord, get me out of here. Okay. I spent 36 hours in the roundhouse. Okay? I said, you get me out of here. I'm going to do it again. I promise I'm going to do it again. When are you going to He got me out. I had gone before the judge. And he said, if I need, I need $250, he's going to lock me up. I mean, $250. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 well, please get me out of here. Lady Cop had pity on me. She took me before another judge, which was unheard of. The favor of God. Amen. And he told me I could leave on my own recognizance as long as I came back for the court date. Which I didn't, but I got out. <laughs> First. <laughs> First. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just totally honest. I got out. And I went right back to the same place and started the same stuff all over again. Only thing is that I had a court date and I was found guilty. But they didn't send me to jail, thank God. They put me on two years probation. But the first six months of probation, I was still smoking and doing what I wanted to do. My parole officer said, You got one more time to come in here like that. And I'm going to tell the judge, give me four to eight. You ain't got to worry about me no more, sir. I left there. I moved out of where I was. And I went into a program house. And I went into a program. I still had my mind, well, I'm going to do these two years and I'm still going back. But God had another plan. Yes. He had a man in that house. Yes. And talked to me going to my mm. And I wasn't going to go. But I had this dream. And I said, okay, I guess I'm going to go in another corner. So I went around the corner. The first time I ever set foot in that place, the Lord held me up in the ladies' bathroom. And I'm up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I have not been the same since. So God be the Lord. Jesus. Remember, in my closing, you are a God.